good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time it is for whoever you are and wherever you're watching from. My name is Linda Larson Schlitz and I am from Wausau, Wisconsin. I am a counselor and I have been doing this little messages, Linda's life lessons, I call them, on this Facebook page now for two and a half years almost. <clears throat> So some of them you can find on my Purpose Driven Recovery Academy uh, page on YouTube, or you can find them right here on Facebook. Would love to hear your comments and your insight in some of these issues. Today, what I want to talk about is <clears throat> motivation, something that I had little to none of this week and that happens to us sometimes so I wanted to talk about what I have discovered what I think some of my issues were with motivation this week and what we can do to gain some motivation to do whatever it is God is calling us to do so let's open with some prayer this morning father I just thank you that You've given us instruction, you've given us guidance, and you've given us wisdom if we choose to accept it from you. So give us right now your Holy Spirit to speak to us that we might go forth and do what you've called us to do with joyful motivation. Thank you for watching this morning. This is, I, I can't. I don't remember when I've had a week like this last week, and I have no idea why. None. But it started, I think, I don't know, Sunday or Monday, full moon, whatever, <laughs> which causes some brain chemistry issues. I just could not stay focused. I got mixed up on things. I went, took somebody to the doctor on the wrong day. I forgot to look at my calendar, actually couldn't read my writing, and missed a client meeting. I'm a counselor. Not a good idea. Then I forgot to respond to another person. Then I forgot something else. It just was one thing after another. I did some video recording, but couldn't get motivated to send them out. And I just, all week long, here it is on Saturday now, and I'm still going, okay, what have I gotten done? Now, when we, when we talk about motivation, for me, here's the key. What are we, what do we get motivated for? What is our purpose? What is our goal? And if my why is not big enough, I'm not going to be motivated to do anything. I did post a picture this week of before and after, and I'm not done yet, but weight loss is a challenge for many of us. Eating is a challenge. Addiction is a challenge. And how do we get motivated to get a handle, get a hold of our minds that causes the feelings, that causes us the behaviors that we do. How do we get motivated to stop doing the bad things and start doing the good things? For me, it is a matter of why. Why do I want to lose weight? Why do I want to get healthy? For me now, as I'm getting older, I'll be 68 on Monday in two days. That's getting up there. <laughs> A lot of people, my friends are dead already. Uh, my mom died before this age. And I don't want to die because I don't think God's, I know God's not done with me. I feel like I'm just kind of getting started on all the things that I think God has for me to do and the people he has for me to reach. So I want to live longer. I am not going to live longer if I continue in the way that I'm going. Now here's the first part of motivation, honesty. We have to get honest with ourselves about our lives, about our direction, about where we're going, about what our purpose is on this earth. If we don't have any purpose to be motivated, then we're not gonna be motivated. We're gonna sit and do nothing all day. 
if we think our only purpose in life is to watch TV, then we're motivated to watch TV. So, okay, just accept that, I guess, if that's what your, your purpose in life is. I was born for more. I was born to transform lives and get people to turn to God and to accept the life that he's given us. And as a Christian, my hope is in my Savior who came and gave me the example of what a Christian should be. He saved me from myself. He gave me an example of self-sacrifice and motivation to do God's will, even when it was hard. That's the tough part. Even when it's hard, we need to get motivated because there's a narrow way, says in Hebrews, there's a narrow path to get to the high calling of Jesus, like like the a needle um, going through the eye of a camel kind of thing. Are we going to be able to get to where we're going in life if we are helter-skelter going all over? This has been a problem for me because my mind goes a million different directions. It's hard to get focused and to do one thing at a time. So I'm off doing other things. I'm motivated to do a lot of things, but it's hard to know which things to focus on. And when I get overwhelmed, here is one of the reasons why. Let me start at the beginning. First reason why we lack motivation is purpose. We don't have purpose. We don't have a reason. We don't have a big enough why to do what we have been trying to do, quitting drugs, quitting alcohol, not spending, staying within the budget, eating healthy, exercising, or why it's not big enough. Even losing weight and living for God wasn't enough for me. And why this became enough, I guess because the whole thing of, I want to donate my body to science. One, it's a service that I can give that can hopefully help a whole bunch of people by having all parts of my body and for science to be able to look at how am I so healthy at 68 that I can still, you know, throw bricks around and rocks and shovel and, and have a lot of energy. How, why am I so healthy? Why has my family lived into their 80s and 90s um, and, and are healthy? Why? So I want to donate my body, but in Wisconsin, I mentioned this last week in order to do that, I have to weigh under 144 pounds and I was up to 188, mm, long ways from there. Could not get motivated to do anything different because food can become an addiction. It can become our comfort. And in order to stay focused on our why, we have to be willing to let go of some of those other things. Some of the Bible verses, I don't like these to be. <laughs> there are some that I would <laughs> prefer to forget, but Proverbs 12, 1 said, Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. <laughs> Now, I don't like calling people names, but the wisdom in Proverbs is that this may be discipline for some of you listening. It's discipline for me. Quit making excuses. <laughs> Quit with the buts. But this, but that, but what am I supposed to do when I go to an event and all there is is junk food? Well, you plan ahead. You bring healthy food and you don't eat the junk food. My kind, loving roommate today, one of our housemates, brought me cherry donuts. Here you go. Like, it was a gift. I'm like, what are you doing? I don't want cherry donuts. I don't like cherry donuts. I'm not eating cherry donuts. There was a day where I would not want somebody to feel bad who brought me a gift, no matter what it was. And I'd say, oh, thank you, that's so nice of you, and I'd eat it, rather than throwing it away or giving it to someone else. Now, 
my motivation is bigger than the donut. That's what you have to get. And I had to get to the discipline stage of this, having to go on high cholesterol medications because I eat too much junk food um, was stupid. <laughs> whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. When I knew you can't keep eating this way and not expect your cholesterol and your blood pressure and all those things to, to go up and your numbers to be off whack, it's stupid to not to listen to this. So, uh, Proverbs 22.15 Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far away. A lot of times we are f afraid of discipline. We don't receive it from others. When people are saying, you have got to quit this behavior. You've got to, for me, my friends, You've got to slow down. You do too much. You're working too hard. You need to take time to relax. And those are things that I don't like to hear because I get good feelings out of doing a lot of stuff. So that's part of the other thing. The first thing is not having a why. The second thing is not being willing to receive instruction from the Bible, from our pastor, from our, our, our friends and family, people who care about us, our mentors, our counselors, are we re willing to receive the, the instruction because without that instruction, we may sit in depression or stress or anxiety or just being frozen. What happens with our brains, and of course I've been working on teaching you about this for several weeks, is the, the whole thing with our brains is we have this part of our brain that is a fight, flight, or freeze response, which God gave us so that we can protect ourselves. But we have learned that sometimes food or drinking or drugs gives us a good feeling so we go there sometimes when we're overwhelmed and we have pain of overwhelm we just freeze sometimes that is what god wants us to do because if we're on overwhelm if we are feeling too much too much too much that may be a clue it is probably a clue that we have not got a balance to life, that we are not putting God first because if we were putting God first, we would not be anxious because Philippians 4 says, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, make your requests known to God and the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, will keep your heart and mind on Christ. So when we get to that overwhelm and we go to, I, I don't know what to do, we just sit and we lose our motivation because we don't know what to do. Now, this is what I discovered happened to me this week. I was on overwhelm. I had too many irons in the fire. I had too many things in my head. I had compromised my calendar. I had taken clients all over the place. So I had some at seven in the morning. I, and I schedule myself next week. Monday I have somebody at seven in the morning that I see. And my last client is at 8.15 at night. So I'm not done till nine. That's 14 hours that I'm committed to have my brain engaged to be able to counsel people. That's not logical. I mean, I'm not working 14 hours straight but I still have to be prepared. So in those other hours, what am I gonna do? I don't just sit here and zone out. I could, I should probably, but I'm doing something for all those 14 hours. So what God, I think, did this week was allow me to realize that I have taken on too much I need, and why do we take on so much? Some of it's ego, 
some of it, oh, I feel so much better when I'm helping people because it feeds my ego. Is it God's will? God works all things together for the good, Romans 8, 28. So we aren't wasting our time helping other people. But sometimes God has a bigger, better plan for us than these little things that we're doing. And we have to spend time with him to figure that out. So I think that's where it was for me yesterday. And I've got a good friend that I met last October, and I've talked about her. Her name is Valerie Galloway, and she just wrote this amazing book, Still Kill and Destroy, um, on addiction and grief. And she's just a great friend and a wonderful coach and mentor. So if you need somebody who's a great listener, go good insight she's like you need to just stop and focus on the important things in a nutshell our hour-long conversation to me in my head boil down to that instead of doing all these things I have in my life I need to I need to hone it down get a hold of my calendar get a hold of what I'm doing so that I can focus and be motivated on the narrow things, keeping my eyes, like it says in Hebrews, on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of my faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning the shame. And he sat down on the right hand of God the Father so that he, I could be received by him and I could find the joy that he offers me through the Spirit. That's the plan, but it's a narrow road. It is focus, it is spending time with him so he can lead and guide me in the way I should go, which he promises to do in James chapter one. If you wanna know what God wants you to do, ask him, he'll tell you. But you must ask with faith, it says, and not with doubting. And that goes on to say, because a man who doubts, and I'm sure a woman, is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. And don't let any person Suppose, don't assume, that a double-minded person who's over here and over here will ever receive anything from the Lord. So when I wonder why I published my book in 2019, this one, Speak to Me, God, I'm Listening, which I kind of was inspired by Sarah Young's book, Jesus Calling, and I wanted that same I wanted to be able to hear Jesus the way she did and to write it down and share it with people. So I put something together like that that is different because it's kind of more recovery-based, 12-step Bible verse, hearing God, you know, with my struggle, here's my struggle, God, and then listening to what God has to say about my struggle. Like today, it is about um, motivation. God, what do I do about motivation? What do you want me to learn? And then I write down what he says. And then I put it in the book. But then I think what's different in this than any other that I've seen is I also responded. Here's the problem. You're listening today about how to get motivated. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, I should pray and ask God what I need to do. I should pray and have the Holy Spirit. You can pray all you want. But then do you listen? And if you're listening and you're saying, God wants me to spend time with him and he wants me to, to move forward, now you gotta decide are you gonna do it. You can know what God wants you to do, James chapter one. If you know what God wants you to do and you fail to do, James five, it is sin. If you know what God wants you to do and you fail to do it, it is sin. I think it's James 5, maybe 4, 17. I'm not sure. It's in James somewhere. But that was that's a hard one because very often we know what God wants us to do and we're, we don't feel like doing it. So we don't. I simply did not know what direction to go this week. I just had this fog. I was in a fog. And I think that part of the fog was being unmotivated because I didn't know which direction to go. Still losing weight, still eating healthy, 
you know, working around the house, doing some of the weightlifting, you know, just little stuff. I'm not pumping iron for hours. But as far as marketing my book, this book I wrote so people could be transformed. I wanted this book to reach as many people as Sarah Young's book had reached in 2014 when more people bought Jesus Calling than bought The Fifty Shades of Grey, which was this smutty book that came out that was cute, number one bestseller on New York Times. And Sarah Young sold more Jesus Calling. What that said to me is people are spiritually hungry. So it's like, yes, I'm going to get this book out there. But I haven't done squat with it. I haven't marketed it. I haven't spent time. It's in all the bookstores. It's for available on Kindle for nothing right now. You can go on Kindle if you've got a Kindle membership for free. It's only 99 cents if you don't, if you want to download it. But I have not done anything with it. And this was my week to do it. I was going to ask people, and I did put one post out for my birthday, which is Monday, instead of that, buy somebody this book for 99 cents. Um, and now I'm deciding, if you don't have 99 cents, if you can't get online, unfortunately, they don't let you download it overseas. I don't know why. But I will buy it for someone, for you. So if you know somebody that might want this book and wants to download it on Kindle, for 99 cents, let me know and I will pay for it because um, I have to pay for it myself. Anyway, um, next, silly. My book. <laughs> I have it on PDF, but that's okay. Kindle's a great thing. So if you want somebody to get that, that's my goal. Because the way that Amazon works is the more people that order it and the more people that you get to review it, the reviews are huge, um, then they send it out. They make it a bestseller and then they actually send an email to millions of people and say, you really need to buy this book. So that's been my goal. But I didn't do it this week because I wasn't clear on the motivation. I had all these other things that I should be doing. I should be getting my speaking. I should be doing this. I should be working on my course. I should be up doing my website. I should be. I can't do it all. God wants us to do things. And sometimes we get visions. We, we Those of you who are visionaries who have something that you see, you want to do, that you feel God's calling you to do, it doesn't mean you're being called to do it right now. It may be up the road. It may be five years up the road. And that's part of it. I want to do everything right now. So um, God is at work. And motivation comes when we are clear on what God's called us to do. We have the vision. We are willing to hear and be disciplined when we're not. Sometimes... We just need that kick. Um, I call it a buttectomy. <laughs> to get off of our butts, B-U-T, and maybe B-U-T-T, -T, if we are sitting around watching TV, and get going. Come on, now quit making excuses, just do it. Some of my butts are, but I don't like to market myself. I don't like to say you need to buy this book, but... I am missing what God's called me to do. It's like, but I don't dare talk about Jesus, or but I'm afraid to mention God because it might offend somebody, but I don't want to tell people that I'm in recovery or I'm, I've you know, been through this trial because they may look down on me. Those are buts that can hinder us from being all that God wants us to be. He wants us to do what he's called us to do, but you have to spend time with him in order to know what that is. So that's the other thing. Quit making excuses. Spend time with God. But I don't know how to hear God speak. Well, then get the book. <laughs> right at the beginning of the book, before the meditations even start, 
I give you instructions on how to do this whole process. I'm trying to find the page. Here it is on XXV. <laughs> 1025 before it starts doing the number thing right before January 1st are you ready to write your own journal and walk with God here's how you hear God speak it's right in the book so you can doubt you don't even have to buy the book you can go on Amazon take a peek at the book you can click on look inside and you can get this you can get the formula right here you can read the whole first part of the book and the first few things so, you know, go ahead and do that. I don't care. I am obviously not doing this for the money. <laughs> 99 cents. Okay, I don't get anything out of the 99 cents. So, uh, please, don't hesitate to get this because if nothing else, you're going to get 365 scriptures a day, a, a, a year, that are going to help you to um, get focused. And a bunch of other things. So, God is at work. And you've got to spend time with him to know where you're going to get motivated. And then, the other good news is he sends, um, where is this? This is 2 Timothy 1.7. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. The Spirit. Okay, normally I would not talk about this as much as I am, but the Spirit of God does not make us timid, shy, too embarrassed to talk about it. God gave me this book for a reason. Who am I to say, oh God, I don't want to look prideful. It's not my deal. He gave me this for a purpose. He gives us power, love. I love people enough to tell them about this and because the Word of God is in here and self-discipline to quit making excuses about this, that, and the other thing and to get off the couch and do what He's called me to do. That's how we get motivated. So whatever your deal is that God's calling you to do, obviously there's simultaneous things. I'm telling you, I have a whole lot more time in my schedule when I'm eating healthy. Because instead of making a whole big meal three times a day, I'm having a protein nutritional smoothie, which takes me two minutes to make in the blender. Or I'm eating a nutritional protein snack bar for a meal, which doesn't take me any time except to open the wrapper and throw it away. So there are ways to make time to do things differently and to eat healthy at the same time. You exercise, walk and pray at the same time or walk and listen to a podcast or walk and dictate into your phone that you probably have with you anyway your daily meditations um, or you know pr pray in there and say okay God I'm listening what do you have for me there's just so many things we could do differently one thing I do each week I've got two minutes to do this is I flip open this book that I wrote and I don't know where it's gonna go I don't know what it says let's see if today it has to it has something to do with it okay step 11 sought through prayer, here's the key, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him praying only for the knowledge of God's will for us and the power to carry that out. Well, gee, isn't that pretty much what I just said? We need to know God's will for us. The challenge that I wrote down, stress. It kills millions of people every year, and the main reason we get stressed out is because we put so much pressure on ourselves without first seeking God. I love how he gives me the right meditation to share with you. We, um, without first seeking God for what his plan is for us, there is perfect peace in the will of God.
when we understand and can come to terms with the fact that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or expect, another Bible verse, we can be at peace. There is nothing we can't do if we are relying on him. Have we realized that we must maintain that contact with him so he can give us the peace that we might hear his voice and do what he asks? Get motivated? Lose weight? Do that thing? Get that book out there? Market that piece of whatever it is God's given you? And what's going to happen? Our hope is Matthew 5, 6. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. My prayer, God, I need your peace and your direction. When I rely on my own strength, I get stressed, and that is not your will. Help me to trust you with all the things I worry about. Speak to me, God, I'm listening. And he said to me, my child, when my son let his servants know that you could do all things through him, who strengthens you he was serious I was serious in sending him that you might have a solution to all of your problems including your motivation he did miracles and when he left and sent the Holy Spirit he made it clear that all the things that he did even greater things you will be able to do your only problem is not trusting the Spirit I gave you and the miracle power that I have provided to all those things that you are worried about. Lay it at my feet today, and there will be no stress, and you will be in perfect peace. You are loved. Wow. My response was, God, today I will choose to experience your perfect peace. What about you? Are you ready? Are you ready to quit procrastinating, to quit being unmotivated, to being depressed and stressed and anxious and not reaching your goals? God's goals, do you even know what they are? If you don't, today's the day. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you. Oh, I love how you do this. I love how you give a message at the last moment, how you got my old computer to work because my new computer doesn't work with Facebook and I love how you are speaking to the people that are listening to get them off of their butts to do your work. Father, help us to quit making excuses and to say, but I can't. Help us to say, but I can and I will. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I love doing these messages. If nobody watched, that's okay. If you did watch, please pass this on to someone else. God is good. Amen.